Well, we're back at the range here, Andy with Sentinel Defense. We're going to go over the use of a timer today. Uh, primarily going to be going through and using carving. Explain to you what it is that we need timers to do for us. There are proper ways to use a timer, and then there's ways to use a timer that aren't all that conducive to tactical use. Uh, timers have their place in competition as well as in tactical training. The best way to look at a timer is to look at it as a tool, as a gauge. Figure out, okay, I'm going to use this time to figure out where I'm good at, what my weaknesses are, and I'm going to gauge my uh, training and track how good I get so that if I'm perhaps looking at an area where I'm deficient, I can start to gauge why am I deficient. Am I having slow trigger speed? Am I having slow target acquisition, slow target transition? So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going over a couple live fire exercises here with the uh, IPSEC targets behind us and go over a couple ways that we can use the timer. And in this case, I have my handy dandy set 8000 pocket timer and kind of, kind of go over a couple options we have in terms of uh, how we can use these timers to make ourselves better shooters. All right, now one use of the timer is for determining what tactics to use. Uh, in this case, I've got two targets here. I'm going to engage both targets. In a multiple target engagement, especially in close quarters situations like this, you're going to be shooting at seven yards, the biggest thing to determine is how you're engaged the targets. Not only who you engage first, but how you're going to engage them. In this case, I'm going to gauge my speed based on a roadhouse rules versus double hammer pair engagement. Uh, roadhouse rules is where you have one shot to target one, two shots to target two, and one shot to target one. Double hammer is where you do two shots to target one, two shots to target two. The goal of this is to engage each target with two rounds. So we can either do roadhouse rules, roadhouse rules, which is one, two, one, or we can do double hammer, which is two, two. So we're going to gauge those with time, and then we'll go over the results. Okay, with that one we had 1.92 seconds. First shot was 0.98 seconds. A little bit slow. Second shot was 1.4 seconds, then 1.56. My split on the double hammer on the on the target two was 0.16 seconds. And then another 0.36 seconds of transition between targets for 1.92 seconds. So through this, what we learn is that I have, for me to transition between targets, it's taking me 0.42 the first time and 0.36 the second time for a total time of 1.92 seconds. Okay, that was double hammer. That was a total of 1.6 seconds. Okay, so we take a look at our numbers. First shot was 0.91 seconds up to the target. Again, again, it's a little bit slow for, for what I'd like, but it's early in the morning, I'm just getting going, whatever. 0.16 seconds for the second follow-up shot. 0.36 seconds of transition between targets to my next shot, that's at 1.42 seconds. And then 0.17 seconds for that follow-up shot there. For a total time of 1.6 seconds, okay? So what do we learn from this? What we learn is that for me to do roadhouse rules, it's 1.92 seconds. For me to do double hammer, it's 1.6 seconds. So that's more than a quarter second faster for me to do a double hammer. So through the use of a timer, I know that the faster engagement for engaging multiple targets is the double hammer. 
Does it mean that it's absolutely the best option? Not necessarily. But if I have an option between either one, I'm going to choose double hammer because I know that it's faster for me. Another use of your timer is to check your equipment or to test your equipment. Now, one of the things that I have on my rifle here, on my registered SBR, is a Geisley, uh, well, a Geisley made, it's an ALG Defense uh, quality mil spec trigger that's made in house by, by Geisley, but it's made through uh, Amy Lynn Geisley. And it's a really nice trigger. You know, I've, I've really started to like it a lot. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to test it against a standard mil spec trigger. And what I found is that the, it's smoother. There's a couple advantages to it in terms of it's a better quality feel to it. Uh, am I any faster with it than a mil spec trigger? So far, not, not so much. I mean, I'm right about there. What I do notice is less fatigue in my finger when I'm going through high round counts throughout the day. But I know that through my timer, I am about the same speed. I'm slightly faster, just a slight bit faster. Now, when I compare this to the Geisley uh, Super Dynamic Combat Trigger that I use in my 16-inch uh, lightweight, uh, I am uh, significantly faster with that trigger than I am with, th with this one or with a mil spec trigger. With this trigger and the mil spec trigger, my splits are about 0.15 to 0.17 between shots. With the Super Dynamic Combat Trigger by Geisley proper, I am at about 0.12 to 0.14 seconds uh, splits between shots on rapid fire. So based on that, the, my performance with the Geisley is very, very good. Uh, does that mean that that is ultimately a better trigger for trigger speed? Not necessarily. Because as I get more proficient with this trigger, and I get, you know, I, I've spent quite a bit of time on the Geisley lately, so it's a factor of me just being very, very in tune with that trigger. Now, as I train with this one, I fully expect my times to get back down. I'll be around the 0.15 and the 0.14. I've pulled 0.14, 0.15 before off of the mil spec triggers, but it's very, very uncommon because I have to be really pushing it. And when I'm doing it like that, my shots tend to move out a little bit more. So that's a nice option to have with timers is it helps you gauge your performance with a new part and to see if it really does pan out to be something that is a good tool for you. So for tactical use, how do we use our timer correctly? Well, best way to do it is to time yourself taking uh, shots, doing follow-up shots, doing drills, and then continue to use that, go through your training. Don't always use your timer for your training, but go through your training as you normally would, and then occasionally come back, use your timer to check where you're at. Uh, additionally, do drills. Try out a lot of the drills, the Viking Tactics drills, out there are really good with the timer because they really help you to uh, become more aggressive on the trigger, to learn trigger control, to learn uh, how to do follow-up shots and transition between targets. And the times that you generate using your timer will help you gauge uh, where you need to make improvements and then it'll also act as a gauge on how well you're doing and how well you're uh, performing and improving. So these are all options that are, you know, are all benefits to having a timer. So. You know, I'm out here hanging out at the range for, you know, pretty nice day. I'm, I'm having fun. I'm starting to shoot off rounds. I'm starting to really kind of lay down the lead. And now I'm, I'm starting to lay down a lot of fire because I'm starting to see some faster times. What I don't want to do is I don't want to use my timer to start trying to beat myself and to make it a game, a competition, to just see how fast I can get on the trigger. Because accuracy without control, or correction, speed without accuracy and control is pointless. It's as Lurie Vickers says, speed is fine, but accuracy, accuracy is final. So we have to take that into account and we have to understand that I can make fast shots all day long, but if I'm not making uh, high chest mass or central nervous system hits, it makes no difference because they're not gonna be lethal hits. They're not gonna be effective hits. And the same thing goes with if you're shooting competition, if you're shooting for that A zone or B zone and you're just ripping off ammo and you're hitting Charlies and uh, Deltas, then it really doesn't matter because your, your, your score is going down because you're going too fast. So you need to make sure that you're not going too fast and you're not outrunning your headlights. And a timer is very good for that because it shows you where you're outrunning your headlights. If you're too busy trying to beat the time or you're too busy trying to generate high times, then you're gonna see your score suffer. 
And then likewise in uh, tactical training, you're going to start seeing your shots go out of those lethal vital zones, which is going to cause problems. And then you're going to start seeing, well, I'm making all these mistakes. And instead of sitting there wondering why you're making these mistakes, you can look at the timer and you can say, oh, this is why. It's because I'm just going too fast. Um, another thing that's really good for it is with pressure. Uh, timers induce uh, artificial stress so that you can have this external stimulus to try and beat times. Uh, modified Navy Qual is a very good option. Uh, I'm going to rip out a modified Navy Qual here and you can kind of see how it works. But what you'll see is uh, trying to beat a time but also needing to be accurate. Okay, you can see my happy target there over my left shoulder. Uh, total of 22.08 seconds on that. Um, I know I threw two shots, which was pretty bad of me, but you know, you pay the point penalty for that. But when you look at the times, what you do is you evaluate your times. So we go there, first shot, 1.21 seconds. 0.92 seconds for second, 0.82, 0.75, 0.76. Okay, you see it's going faster, but we're standing from 50 yards, so your time splits are going to be a little bit higher. Then what we do is we have a mag change, 5.99 seconds to do a mag change and drop to kneeling. Okay, I did the uh, Monica position there for kneeling, which is my preferred position. 0 0.67, 0 0.57, 0 0.49, and 0.52 and point, were my splits for uh, shooting from kneeling. So I know through the use of a timer that kneeling position is more stable and faster than a standing position at 50 yards. Then I had 8.3 seconds to do a mag change and drop to prone. I kind of had a brain fart there. I screwed up a little bit. I should have done that faster. So I know that 8.3 seconds was an indication of how crappy I did that. I should be able to do that in about 6 seconds. Then I had 0 0.29, 0 0.27, 0 0.22. 0.26 and those are my splits okay so we definitely know that from the prone uh, you are much faster than any other position the prone is twice as fast as kneeling and kneeling is you know point point in the point five range versus the point eight point nine range so significantly faster so you're 40 what 40 percent faster there so as you go down and you see this through the use of the timer you can see where your strengths lie and one of the good things about this is, I know from prone I can be very fast. From kneeling I can be pretty fast, but from standing I kind of suck. So I need to bring that down and I need to take those times down while still maintaining my accuracy. So it gives me something to work on. All right, that pretty much sums it up for just kind of a general overview. Again, this isn't gonna be an all-inclusive demonstration of how to use a timer. It is a way to artificially gauge yourself when you don't have somebody else around to tell you where you're making mistakes. And you can't learn if you don't know where your mistakes are. So a timer will help you to see that. You don't necessarily have to do this stuff. Get creative with it. Find out other ways. Do different drills. Do whatever you have to do to make yourself a better shooter. And a timer is a very good way to do that. So from here on out, hopefully it's something that you can take with you. These things aren't that expensive. This was a little over $100. Um, there are some less expensive ones, and there's a lot of good companies out there that you can get timers from. So if you have any questions, post down below. Subscribe if you like it. And as always, keep around in the chamber. So needless to say, we're, uh, we're done for the day. Well, I don't know about that. If it ain't raining, we ain't training, right?